planets, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Thanks to the invention of the telescope, Uranus was discovered in 1781. But discrepancies in its orbit meant that something was tugging at it. Sure enough, that something turned out to be Neptune. Ever since, scientists have wondered if there might be yet another planet in our solar system, sometimes called Planet X. Now, astronomers have strong evidence for one. A planet roughly the size of Neptune, with a mass ten times the Earth's, and a thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Just as Neptune was predicted based on its influence on Uranus, the evidence for Planet X is indirect. Astronomers observe six small solar system objects and notice they come closest to the Sun in a unique configuration. There's only a 1 in 15,000 chance that this orbital clustering is a coincidence. It is much more likely that Planet X has shepherded the six objects into their orbits. This explodes our conception of the solar system because Planet X would loop around the Sun unimaginably far away in a strange elliptical orbit, so far away that it takes 15,000 years to make the trip. By comparison, Neptune's orbital period is 165 years. Of course, not everyone will be convinced of Planet X until we have visual proof. Researchers are now using one of the world's largest telescopes, Subaru, in Hawaii, and they say they have a reasonable chance of finding Planet X in the next five years. Once spotted, we can welcome Planet X as the ninth planet in our solar system. So that's Nibiru over Dugum at 9 o'clock last night. There's no other stars in the sky and uh, it's about three times bigger than Venus. We're going to try and get it better tonight <coughs> with a more stable tripod. Third week of November 2016.
disasters have swept the globe with a fury this year. Massive floods have happened across the United States, Europe, and the Far East. What is causing these cat catastrophic events? The cause can be seen right here. Our oceans are unusually warm, which results in rapid evaporation. The evaporation causes humidity, which results in record-breaking rainfall and raging floodwaters all across the world. Temperature extremes are becoming more prevalent each year. Even so, the maps that indicate these extremes are being altered to keep us uninformed and unaware of what is really happening here on Earth. Temperatures in both the Antarctic and Arctic regions are being whited out on maps and charts so that the public will not question whether a major catastrophe is gradually taking place. Some anomaly maps blot out various regions with gray, which means insufficient data, while other maps show the real dangers. The devastation continues across the globe while federal, state, and military officials are drafting contingency plans when the big one hits the fan. These plans reflect deep anxiety about a looming disaster, an economy and infrastructure that would be wiped out in the blink of an eye. Recent events show how truly vulnerable we are and whether we will ever see an effective government response to these events. Disturbing events are happening across the globe on a daily basis. Civilizations are on the verge of collapse as social unrest and the threat of human annihilation by forces both on earth and in the heavens becomes the topic of the mainstream media. Is our planet about to change forever? Here are but a few of the many discerning developments taking place recently.
Americans may be heading closer to a flashpoint for the first time in decades. And News Channel 5's Rebecca Schleicher shows us why experts say the presidential election will play a key role in the recent resurgence of Cold War tensions. The president issued an executive order today trying to get the science community prepared for solar storms that could disrupt us here on Earth. Solar storms happen all the time. Scientists say that they're like a million nuclear bombs exploding at the same time. One way to get at America, and an easy way, quite frankly, is through an EMP attack, an electromagnetic pulse attack. So we've known about the capability of EMP. The first study had the commission headed by Roscoe Bartlett, Republican out of uh, Frederick, Maryland, 2004. Testimony in that study indicated 90%, let me repeat that, 90% of all Americans will die within 12 to 18 months after an EMP event. So what exactly is it that is causing the world to become entrenched in fear and uncertainty? Could an astronomical phenomena be responsible for the tumultuous behavior of so many people and nations across the world and the restless and unsettling events now taking place on this planet? The answer is yes, it could be, and this may explain why. I have mentioned previously how earthquakes are becoming more frequent and more intense as time passes. In 1939, a very knowledgeable prognosticator named Carlos Munoz Ferrada, who was also a professional astronomer, engineer, and physicist, predicted with extraordinary precision a devastating earthquake that the mainstream science had asserted was impossible to predict. His prediction was published in the journal El Sur from Concepcion, Chile, on Thursday, January 19th of 1939, but it was ignored. That day, he predicted that on January 24th of that year, at 7.10 p.m., an earthquake would devastate Chile. But no one believed him. Indeed, with only four hours apart, his prediction was fulfilled. At 11.29 p.m., for 18 seconds, Chile shook. A major earthquake destroyed five provinces in southern Chile, killing 40,000 people. In reality, he accurately predicted a series of quakes in May of 1960. He predicted the powerful tsunami that reached Alaska, the Great Earthquake of 1965 in Lagoy, and the 1985 quake in Valparaiso, Chile. He was able to foretell seismic events mathematically by calculating direct correlations between astronomical phenomena and Earth events. The most significant prediction found by Munoz Ferrada was not an earthquake, though, but the future arrival of a great comet planet, also known as Herculubus or Planet X. He calls it a comet planet because it is as big as a planet, presumably six times bigger than Jupiter, but has a tail and follows the elliptical orbit like a comet and travels between the sun and a black sun that is 32 billion kilometers away. Herculubus hasn't penetrated the solar system for 13,000 years. And 13,000 years ago were the times of the lost Atlantis. The comet planet has a lot of cosmic energy, does not uh, respect the established laws of celestial mechanics, and has resonance and radioactive effects that can produce reflections and weaknesses, and could cause illnesses, epidemics, and affect human behavior. The ninth planet, or comet planet, will enter the solar system and get as close as 14 million kilometers of the distance from the Earth. It will become visible and people will be able to photograph Planet X. It will cause a catastrophic attraction of the incandescent mineral liquids of Earth's inner structure, triggering earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Its effects will be devastating. Two years before his death in the year 2001, 
Munoz Ferrada revealed that all these geophysical and climate changes in planet Earth would intensify from the year 1999 going forward. According to Carlos Ferrada, an astronomical phenomena will occur within our present time frame. Among the characteristics of this phenomena are the following. It is a red planet which travels an elliptical orbit of a comet and has the great mass of a planet, in other words, a planet with a tail. The star is charged with cosmic energy, as to say rarefied radiation which according to scholars will alter human health and behavior. It will provoke incurable epidemics and irritability, bringing wars. It does not comply with the conventional established celestial physical laws. It travels between our sun and a black sun, which is found 32 trillion kilometers away. It will pass as close as 14 million kilometers from Earth. It is approximately six times bigger than Jupiter. Thus, its approach of 14 million kilometers from our world will create a disastrous attraction with the incandescent liquid minerals inside the Earth, precipitating tremendous internal pressures and therefore volcanoes and earthquakes. It will end up penetrating our solar system and be visible to the naked eye as well as being photographed. Its arrival will cause human and geophysical changes, bringing much change and destruction to the Earth. Indeed, this is how the planet has been seen and photographed, even though the official media has given this phenomena various false explanations. Now you can, for yourselves, see various photos and videos of two suns on various web pages and newspaper publications. Carlos Ferrara corroborated that which was already stated by the great humanist Samuel Weyor in the late 1970s both in relation to Herculubus as well as that the scientists who are at the service of the large groups of economic and political power establishments would publish various false interpretations in order to try to cover up the reality of this approaching planet in order to protect the financial markets. Thus they have posted that this observed star is Mars or some visiting star and they have invented scenarios to justify the fall of the satellites and shuttles as well as the terrible atypical electromagnetic and radioactive storms throughout the whole solar system. There is research now being conducted that links mass extinctions on the Earth to a suspected ninth planet, according to Daniel Whitmire, a professor of astrophysics and present faculty member at the University of Arkansas Department of Mathematical Sciences. He published findings in the January issue of monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society that the as yet undiscovered Planet X triggers comet showers linked to mass extinctions on Earth at intervals of approximately 27 million years. Whitmire and his colleague John Matisse first published research on the connection between Planet X and mass extinctions in the journal Nature in 1985 while working as astrophysicist at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Their work was featured in a 1985 Time magazine cover story titled Did Comets Kill the Dinosaurs? A Bold New Theory About Mass Extinctions. At the time, there were three explanations proposed to explain the regular comet showers. Planet X, the existence of a sister star to the Sun, and vertical oscillations of the Sun at its orbits, the galaxy. The last two ideas have subsequently been ruled out as inconsistent with the paleontology record. Only Planet X remained as a viable theory and it is now gaining renewed attention. Whitmire and Matisse's theory is that as Planet X orbits the Sun, its tilted orbit slowly rotates and Planet X passes through the Kuiper belt of comets every 27 million years, knocking comets into the inner solar system. The dislodged comets not only smash into the Earth, 
they also disintegrate in the inner solar system as they get nearer to the sun, reducing the amount of sunlight that reaches the earth. And so the saga of Planet X and Nibiru continues today, despite the relentless efforts of shills and debunkers to shuffle it under the rug or lay it to bed once and for all. But as we already know all too well, this story does not die and does not go away, because what is unreal for some is very real for others, and reality is in the eyes of the beholder. Here now is this week's Planet X update. The evidence is mounting and soon all things will be revealed. Check out these amazing captures by observers just like you. I have to say with some concern that what we are seeing in these images from Bloomberg TV on November 15th is incredible. Two suns clear as day captured by their cameras. Either we are being manipulated by the media and various disinformation agencies, or what is now being revealed is very real and should have each of us on pins and needles trying to decipher the information that is coming in faster then it can be analyzed. Listen to the individual at the end of this video who is watching this program as he shouts out in astonishment, look, two suns. British American already owns 42% of rentals. Home Depot posted third quarter earnings that beat estimates, the largest home improvement chain signaling confidence that Americans will keep spending on renovation projects. The company raised its profit forecast for the year. Home Depot's safe store sales were up a better than expected 5.5%. Jaguar is working on its first Look, electric car. The Jaguar I-Pace is set for production in 2018. The red planet Nibiru and its iron oxide dust tail suddenly appears on the Mastria Observatory webcam in Brazil just this morning, November 17, 2016. Notice the very distinct V-shaped outline of the debris tail. This is a first-time anomaly from this particular webcam observation center. The following images were originally posted by one of our Facebook followers who uh, recently observed the formation of the system while traveling on a flight from Los Angeles to San Francisco. He mentioned that several passengers saw the formation and were astonished. He mentioned that the flight attendant had thought that it was possibly a sun dog capture, but as you can see from these images, this is no sun dog anomaly or an ordinary lens flare. Coincidentally, these images posted on our Facebook page have gone viral across the social media sites in the last few days. A Skywatch observer from Iowa captured these still images on November 16th, showing a planetoid or brown dwarf visible to the upper left of the sun prior to sunset. This may be the same object that is now said to be following the path of Venus across the western sky and this image possibly showing the same object as it appeared for just one hour as the sun was setting in Oregon. This video published on November 16th by Impossible Channel seems to corroborate the images that we just showed. This includes footage of an incoming brown dwarf star that was observed by an amateur astronomer in Texas recently. So listen in as the narrator describes this entity, which is strikingly similar to the images just shown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is James Lefro of the Impossible Channel. I believe we are going into a boat ride, guys. David Keller sent us an email today with three pictures from a brown dwarf star approaching our system. And it may be already here, and that's what you're seeing in the sky. And that's what's making the moon look red and the sky look pinkish, okay? The date of the pictures are from November 14th, 2016. And the direction he was looking at as an astronomer is south by southwest. And the time was taken at 6.30 and 45 degrees up from our ecliptic. So I'm going to leave you with some videos and pictures and I think you should share this right away okay this is coming from all over the world this is really serious this is the government's not going to talk about it I believe they're actually fleeing okay to these this anonymous country I don't know maybe Antarctica whatever 
they're not going to talk about it, okay? And they're going to leave us with whatever cataclysm, whatever, you know, catastrophe is going to happen, okay? So please do share this right away, okay? Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment below on what you're going to see right now. This video is going to get rough, okay? So watch it until the end. Thank you very much for being here. See you again. And here is an image taken on November 9th from southwest Alberta, Canada, showing this object shortly after Venus had set below the horizon. This amateur astronomer has indicated that this object is observable just to the left and slightly above Venus in the night sky. And finally, this image from Argentina on November 12th, showing the brown dwarf at the four arrows visible prior to sunset. Cierto entrate in Spanish refers to the entrance of the body, a celestial body in this respect. And it is back in the news again today. The California Institute of Technology published a study claiming they have discovered a true ninth planet beyond Pluto. For the first time in 170 years, evidence of this ninth planet was found on the far edge of the system. Astronomers at this, the California Institute of Technology have not directly seen it yet, but they think it's up to 10 times bigger than Earth and 20 times farther away than Neptune. Two scientists at Caltech say they've discovered a ninth planet in the outer corners of our solar system. It's pretty exciting to know it's out there and waiting to be found. Two years ago, we realized that there was something funny going on in the outer solar system. What these orbits are, are showing us, they're showing us sort of a gravitational one-way sign towards the existence of an additional body. These researchers say for the last 13 years, a handful of objects have been found by other astronomers, and all of these objects swing in the same direction. That can't happen by chance. We knew something funny was going on. Many may remember Mike Brown for his role in demoting Pluto as a planet about a decade ago. What's the evidence that it's there? So the evidence is that we can look at objects orbiting around our solar system and figure out why their motions are the way they are because of the gravitational influences of everything else around. So we looked at a small group of objects newly discovered and realized we couldn't actually completely understand their motion. However, if we insert into the equation about that an object about the size of this planet nine, everything then worked out perfectly. So that's what gives the suspicion that it really does exist. They can't exactly see this thing from a telescope or, or anything like that. Instead, they are using data about uh, how other objects as far out as Pluto uh, are, are reacting and moving out of alignment, getting out of its way. So data like that actually suggests a heavy gravitational pull, which primarily comes from things that are, are qualified to be called planet. Uh, but they do have two giant telescopes on two different continents searching for the physical evidence of this thing's existence. Right now, the best that they can say is that something really, really, really big beyond Pluto exists because space rocks are moving out of the way, um, as well as it's causing misaligned positions uh, among the outer planets. The orbit of other celestial bodies seem to re be responding to something. What that is, nobody can actually confirm just yet. It's, it's so far away that even though it's big, it's very, very dim and it'd be very tough to spot with the telescope. I'm also fascinated at the idea that this planet could be so far out there and still our sun be the mass that is keeping it in the gravitational pull of our solar system. Right, right, yeah, but no, that's, it's true. That's incredible. And so there was a thought at one point from scientists that when they thought that there was something beyond Pluto, that it might have been all the mass of objects floating in the, in the Kyber belt, but it's not. Right, so, so the, all those objects are out there and they have a lot of mass, and originally the scientists said, look, a planet is such a crazy idea, maybe it's the Kuiper Belt itself that's pulling it on, on itself and making these, these orbits look funny. 
and they ran simulations and they tried to make that work and it didn't work. It just didn't work. There's not enough stuff out there. So you don't see it, but you said it's all about the numbers. So two scientists are playing around with numbers and they think what? They think, huh, this doesn't add up. Yeah. We need to ask some other folks to take a look at this for us and tell us if we're crazy. And sure enough, that's what they did. The Caltech astronomers looked at the number and said, you know that idea about there being another planet? That's not a crazy idea. It looks like it's really possible. So now what they'll do is they'll let this information out to the rest of the astronomical community to try to help figure out what's going on, to make sure that everything's correct. And now they'll also do the observations. And so they've already stepped forward to say they're convinced. Well, it is. It, uh, yes, they are pretty well convinced now they need the visual evidence to back it up because, as I said, the numbers don't lie. But the critics of this study say that it's possible that this, uh, this large body is simply an ancient core, an core of a, a gas giant that was ejected out to the farthest reaches of the solar system thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. What does this tell us about our solar system? Well, one thing it tells us is that we don't really understand it as well as we thought we did. <laughs> and another is that it probably had a very violent beginning. This thing was probably formed much closer in and then flung out maybe in a close encounter with Jupiter or something. You mentioned that scientists haven't seen it yet because of how far away it is and yeah. how dim it is. Is there a way for them to get visual evidence? Yes, so, so the biggest telescopes in the world can theoretically see this thing if they're looking in exactly the right place. And with the publication of this new paper today, uh, they are now going to start to look in earnest. Hi, I'm Jim Green, Director of Planetary Science at NASA. You know, NASA works with the international science community to explore our solar system and beyond. We look to unravel the mysteries that intrigue us all as we explore and answer the big questions. Questions like, how did the Earth originate and change over time? How did the solar system begin and evolve? And what will be its destiny? What will be our destiny? Last July 14th, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft flew past Pluto, capping a half century of exploration of our solar system. It piqued our interest about what lies beyond Pluto and what can we learn about ourselves and the origins of our solar system. The idea of a new planet is certainly an exciting one for me as a planetary scientist, and I think for all of us. The January 20th paper in the Astronomical Journal is fueling our interest in planetary exploration and stimulating a healthy debate that's part of the scientific process. I couldn't be more pleased about what's happening. You know, it's all about starting the process that could lead to an exciting result. It is not, however, the detection of a new planet. It's too early to say with certainty that there is a so-called Planet X out there. What we're really seeing is an early prediction based on modeling from limited observations. What's exciting is that, like NASA's journey to Mars or New Horizons flyby of Pluto, you will have a front row seat to see how the scientific process unfolds. Theories like this serve to stimulate ideas and conversation. They tap into our innate curiosity. It's important for us to continue to work, and we will. Anytime we have an interesting idea like this, we always apply Carl Sagan's rules for critical thinking, which include independent confirmation of the facts, looking for alternate explanations, and encouraging scientific debate. If Planet X is out there, we'll find it together. Or we'll determine an alternate explanation for the data that we've received so far. Now, let's go explore. But Batygin and Brown are not the first to claim that they've discovered a new major planet beyond Neptune. In fact, the hunt for Planet X has been on for over a century. But every promising claim has ultimately been shut down by scientists. <laughs> We began in 2009 with the launch of NASA's Kepler mission. Kepler's main scientific objective was to find planets outside of our solar system. It did this by staring at a single field in the sky, this one with all the tiny boxes. And in this one field, it monitored the brightness of over 150,000 stars continuously for four years, taking a data point every 30 minutes. It was looking for what astronomers call a transit. This is when the planet's orbit is aligned in our line of sight, just so that the planet crosses in front of a star. And when this happens, it blocks out a tiny bit of starlight, which you can see as a dip in this curve. And so the team at NASA had developed very sophisticated computers to search for transits in all the Kepler data. At the same time of the first data release, astronomers at Yale were wondering an interesting thing. What if computers miss something. 
And so we launched the citizen science project called Planet Hunters to have people look at the same data. The human brain has an amazing ability for pattern recognition, sometimes even better than a computer. However, there was a lot of skepticism around this. My colleague Deborah Fisher, founder of the Planet Hunters project, said that people at the time were saying, "You're crazy. There's no way that a computer will miss a signal." And so it was on the classic human versus machine gamble. And if we found one planet, we would be thrilled. When I joined the team four years ago, we had already found a couple. And today, with the help of over 300,000 science enthusiasts, we have found dozens. And we've also found one of the most mysterious stars in our galaxy. So to understand this, let me show you what a normal transit in Kepler data looks like. On this graph, on the left-hand side, you have the amount of light, and on the bottom is time. The white line is the light just from the star, what astronomers call a light curve. Now, when a planet transits a star, it blocks out a bit, little bit of this light, and the depth of this transit reflects the size of the object itself. <clears throat> and so, for example, let's take Jupiter. Planets don't get much bigger than Jupiter. Jupiter will make a 1% drop in the star's brightness. Earth, on the other hand, is 11 times smaller than Jupiter, and signal is barely visible in the data. So, back to our mystery. A few years ago, planet hunters were sifting through data looking for transits, and they spotted a mysterious signal coming from the star KIC 8462852. The observations in May of 2009 were the first they spotted, and they started talking about this in the discussion forums. They said an object like Jupiter would make a drop like this in the star's light, but they were also saying it was giant. You see, transits normally only last for a few hours, and this one lasted for almost a week. They were also saying that it looks asymmetric, meaning that instead of the clean U-shaped dip that we saw with Jupiter, it had the strange slope that you can see on the left side. This seemed to indicate that whatever was getting in the way and blocking the starlight was not circular like a planet. There are a few more dips that happened, but for a couple of years it was pretty quiet. And then in March of 2011, we see this: the star's light drops by a whole 15 percent. And this is huge compared to a planet, which would only make a 1% drop. We describe this feature as both smooth and clean. It also is asymmetric, having a gradual dimming that lasts almost a week, and then it snaps right back up to normal in just a matter of days. And again, after this, not much happens, until February of 2013. Things just start to get really crazy. There is a huge complex of dips in the light curve that appear, and they last for like a hundred days, all the way up into the Kepler mission's end. These dips have variable shapes; some are very sharp and some are broad, and they also have variable durations. Some last just for a day or two, and some for more than a week. And there's also up and down trends within some of these dips, almost like several independent events were superimposed on top of each other. And at this time, this star drops in its brightness. Over 20 percent. This means that whatever is blocking its light has an area of over a thousand times the area of our planet Earth. This is truly remarkable. And so the citizen scientists, when they saw this, they notified the science team that they found something weird enough that it might be worth following up. And so when the science team looked at it, we're like, "Yeah, there's there's probably just something wrong with the data." But we looked really, really, really hard, and the data were good. And so, what was happening had to be astrophysical, meaning that something in space was getting in the way and blocking starlight. And so, at this point, we set out to learn everything we could about the star to see if we could find any clues to what was going on. And the citizen scientists who helped us in this discovery, they joined along for the ride, watching science in action firsthand. First, somebody said, "Well." You know, what if this star was actually very young, and it still had the cloud of material it was born from surrounding it? And then somebody else said, "Well, what if the star had already formed planets, and two of these planets had collided, similar to the Earth-Moon forming event?" Well, both of these theories could explain part of the data, but the difficulties were that the star showed no signs of being young, and there was no glow from any of the material that was heated up by the star's light. And you would expect this if the star was young, or If there was a collision and a lot of dust was produced, and so somebody else said, "Well, how about extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence?" And it is my job, my responsibility as an astronomer, to remind people that alien hypotheses should always be a last resort. 
Now, I want to tell you a story about that. It involves data from a NASA mission, ordinary people, and one of the most extraordinary stars in our galaxy. A huge swarm of comets that are passing by the star in a very elliptical orbit. Well, it ends up that this is actually consistent with our observations. But I agree, it does feel a little contrived. You see, it would take hundreds of comets to. There might be a whole new planet on the other side of Pluto. It's named 2012 VP113, jokingly dubbed Biden. Get it? Uh, Corey Powell's editor at large for Discover Magazine and Studio. How are you doing, Corey? Uh, VP Biden. Right on. There we go. <laughs> Correct on that. Two images show you. This is the arrow obviously pointing to it. But there are three dots on here. One is red, one is green, one is blue. Right. What's significant? So this is, this is the actual discovery image. Basically, t two astronomers were looking, one little patch of sky very, very far away, looking for exactly this kind of thing. Stars don't move. Planets or anything that's like a planet does. Mm -hmm. So this is color-coded. This is what they saw on different nights. They're looking for one thing moving. They color-coded it to, to show that all these stars are staying still. This thing is moving, and the way it's moving... So this is just one... It's one object, color-coded. Is three, Pluto three on nights. this? Pluto's in a whole different part of the sky. So this is way out there. This is way out there. Well, this is more, is than, more than twice as far away as Pluto. Unbelievable. Why does this matter, Corey? Well, there are two ways you can look at it. I think you know, I look at it, first of all, as, a, as an exploration question. That there, you know, We know where we are on Earth. We've mapped our planet. Our solar system is still terra incognita. It's full of surprises. This object is something that astronomers said shouldn't even be there. There's a mm. whole other solar system beyond the planets that we know that are full of these things that are sort of planets, sort of comets. Some of them they call dwarf planets. That's what they're calling this one. What we're seeing is we're seeing our neighborhood. We're seeing what's around us. And then the knew about six planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Thanks to the invention of the telescope, Uranus was discovered in 1781. But discrepancies in its orbit meant that something was tugging at it. Sure enough, that something turned out to be Neptune. Ever since, scientists have wondered if there might be yet another planet in our solar system, sometimes called Planet X. Now, astronomers have strong evidence for one. A planet roughly the size of Neptune, with a mass ten times the Earth's, and a thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Just as Neptune was predicted based on its influence on Uranus, the evidence for Planet X is indirect. Astronomers observe six small solar system objects and notice they come closest to the Sun in a unique configuration. There's only a 1 in 15,000 chance that this orbital clustering is a coincidence. It is much more likely that Planet X has shepherded the six objects into their orbits. This explodes our conception of the solar system, because Planet X would loop around the Sun unimaginably far away, in a strange elliptical orbit, so far away that it takes 15,000 years to make the trip. By comparison, Neptune's orbital period is 165 years. Of course, not everyone will be convinced of Planet X until we have visual proof. Researchers are now using one of the world's largest telescopes, Subaru, in Hawaii, and they say they have a reasonable chance of finding Planet X in the next five years. Once spotted, we can welcome Planet X as the ninth planet in our solar system.
So that's Nibiru over Tugum at 9 o'clock last night. There's no other stars in the sky and uh, it's about three times bigger than Venus. We're going to try and get it better tonight <coughs> with a more stable tripod. Third week of November 2016. Disasters have swept the globe with a fury this year. Massive floods have happened across the United States, Europe, and the Far East. What is causing these cat catastrophic events? The cause can be seen right here. Our oceans are unusually warm, which results in rapid evaporation. The evaporation causes humidity, which results in record-breaking rainfall and raging floodwaters all across the world. Temperature extremes are becoming more prevalent each year. Even so, the maps that indicate these extremes are being altered to keep us uninformed and unaware of what is really happening here on Earth. Temperatures in both the Antarctic and Arctic regions are being whited out on maps and charts so that the public will not question whether a major catastrophe is gradually taking place. Some anomaly maps blot out various regions with gray, which means insufficient data, while other maps show the real dangers. The devastation continues across the globe while federal, state, and military officials are drafting contingency plans when the big one hits the fan. 